Many people are convinced that the bigger the biceps, the healthier the human. I mean, who wouldn't want to look like a superhero? But it's muscle quality and strength that are often overlooked, often more important than mass itself. And it may be that too much mass is a negative thing. Why is muscle vital for overall health? How does this quality decline with age? And what's the optimal amount for lifelong health? Well, let's get into it. <laughs> Muscle is more than an attractive aesthetic. It makes everyday living better. It's easier for me to shovel the driveway, mow the lawn, carry in groceries, or garden than it is for my grandma. An adequate strength allows me to maintain proper posture throughout, thus decreasing injuries, aches, and pains that build up over the years, thus increasing the longevity of my higher quality of life. But does increased physical activity lead to increased mental activity? Many studies have run participants of all ages through a basic fitness assessment. They test grip strength, walking speed, and chair rise speed. They then complete a mental wellness assessment before and after an extended exercise program. And what they find is that improved physical health leads to improved mental health. More muscle and strength equals more mental clarity and optimism. Look better feel better. But muscle does more than just that. Muscle tissue is the most abundant, insulin-sensitive tissue in the body. If you're insulin resistant, then your body works overtime to produce more insulin to maintain life. That increases your risk for diabetes, obesity, and metabolic syndrome. Instead, building more muscle can increase the utilization of existing insulin. Your body can then relax on the overtime and resist the consequent diseases. This is just one adaptation of many that occurs with increasing muscle mass. These adaptations lead to longer and healthier lives, but are all muscles the same and which are most important? Type 1 muscle fibers are slow twitch fibers. They produce less force but have increased endurance. Aerobic activities like walking, biking, and cycling utilize more of these type 1 muscle fibers. Type 2 are the opposite. These fast twitch fibers produce a lot more force but tire quickly. Anaerobic activities like stopping a fall or weightlifting or sprinting utilize more of these type 2 muscle fibers. Each has advantages in everyday life so maintaining both is critical but these type 2 fast twitch fibers decline a lot more rapidly with age. Muscle mass starts to decline in the fourth and fifth decade of life but this is largely preventable with resistance training. But if not prevented, then about 0.5 to 1% of muscle mass is lost per year. This progressive loss of muscle mass is the start, the first stage of sarcopenia. Surprisingly, muscle strength is lost at an even faster rate of 1 to 3% per year. This loss in muscular strength is the second stage of sarcopenia. And finally, muscle power is lost at the fastest rate of 3 to 5% per year. This decline in physical performance is the third stage of severe sarcopenia. This suggests that muscle strength and power are equally, if not more important than the mass itself. But how do we measure our muscle mass and what's the optimal amount? As I mentioned before, DEXA scans are the gold standard for measuring body composition. They break up the body into three compartments, fat, bone, and fat-free mass. So fat-free mass includes so fat-free mass is mostly muscle, but it also includes organs, blood, and connective tissues. If we just use fat-free mass to gauge muscle mass, then there's gonna be some interference from those extra tissues. Luckily, DEXA scans can measure fat, bone, and fat-free mass on the legs and arms specifically. This reduces some of the interference from organs that are stored in the core of the body. This measurement is called the Relative Skeletal Muscle Index and is used to gauge sarcopenia. My scan in November assessed my RSMI at 10.49 kilograms per meter squared. That's well above the sarcopenia classification of 7.26 kilograms per meter squared for men and 5.45 kilograms per meter squared for women. If I maintain my resistance training, then I should have no worries about getting near that sarcopenia classification risk. Ideally, a level above 8.7 for men and 7 for a woman should be maintained throughout the life, but not everybody has access to a DEXA machine. Luckily, you can calculate your fat-free mass index, FFMI, pretty easily. All you need to know is your height, weight, and body fat percentage. See my video on body fat for different ways to calculate that accurately. Then just plug those numbers into any online calculator. And here you can see my normalized FFMI of 20.62. A normalized FFMI better scales for people of various heights. So ideally, men should aim for an FFMI above 19 and a woman 16.5. This amount of muscle mass maintained over your lifespan will lead to measurable improvements in how you look, feel, and function. But can you have too much muscle? A male FFMI above 25 
or a woman above 22, is suggestive of steroid use when body fat is low. It's not easy to get to these levels naturally or without being overweight. Even levels above 22 for a male or 19 for a female may be too much. That amount of muscle mass is either gonna push you into a higher undesirable BMI category or is gonna drop your body fat percentage too low. Even bodybuilders or powerlifters who have a lot of muscle mass and a very low body fat percentage still worry me. Carrying around muscle tissue puts extra demand on the cardiovascular system. It also puts more stress on the digestive system with the increased caloric intake. And while maintaining substantial amounts of muscle mass may look cool to some, I'm just not sure it's great for overall long-term health. Studies have shown that the ratio of muscle mass to body composition, rather than total muscle mass, is a strong predictor of metabolic syndrome and early mortality. Therefore, I think it's best to get into the 19 to 22 normalized FFMI range as a male, or 16.5 to 19 as a female assuming that you have an optimal BMI. And once you're in those ranges, focus on increasing muscle quality. Speed, strength, and power are critical components to train as you age. They're likely to provide more benefits than mass itself. So here are my final thoughts. Muscle tissue is the most abundant insulin sensitive tissue in the body. It therefore decreases your risk for disease, death, and disability, and it improves your overall quality of life. Everyday living is easier and mental health is boosted. Achieving a normalized FFMI of 19 to 22 as a male or 16 and a half to 19 as a female is optimal. But it's muscle speed, power, and strength that decline the most quickly with age. So if you're interested in protocols to optimize these components, subscribe to my weekly newsletter. That way you'll get immediately updated when I post on these upcoming topics for health excellence. Thanks for stopping by and I look forward to seeing you guys next week.